looking at judge and justice. I was thinking about this because I had an interesting conversation with somebody a number of years ago. It was somebody who uh, was a professed atheist and held a lot of anger towards the idea of a God of justice and uh, felt it was very unfair to uh, have this idea that somebody could go to hell, that God would actually send somebody to hell if they didn't know, and how could that be, and things, uh, question, you know, comments along those lines. And over the years, I've I've pondered that conversation, and just in anticipation of of the name this week, seeing that it was judged. It'd been a long time since I'd reflected on that conversation. Because I remember at the time explaining that, oh, God provided a way out from, from hell by providing Jesus. All someone has to do is accept the way that he gave. And um, that, that sometimes makes people angry because they don't want to have to do it a certain way. They want to do it their own way or they don't want to admit that there is a way. And I think it's unfortunate when people say, well, God sends somebody to hell. He doesn't really do that. In essence, they're doing it themselves because they're saying, I don't want to be with him for eternity. And there really is a, a, a place outside of God and his love is going to be a hell. And that's their choice, which is sad. So I was thinking again on this idea of of righteous when they made the comment, well, that's not fair. But you wouldn't want a crooked judge. You wouldn't want injustice, would you? Injustice, injustice or unfairness. Uh, you know, they're saying that it's not fair to, to have to follow the rules. But if God doesn't follow the rules, then we wouldn't know where we stand. You'd think, well, gee, do I do I have to work harder? Is there something I could do? Maybe I can get him to change his mind. Maybe I can bribe him. You want a fair judge. So when people complain about God being having you know right and wrong and and having judgment, if you think about it, the opposite of that would be absolute anarchy and chaos and You'd have Satan, who isn't fair, who isn't just, and who isn't righteous. You know, that's that's the opposite of that. And that's not, you don't want that. But I don't think people realize what they're saying when they're saying they don't want a God of justice. And what could be kinder than for somebody to say, yes, there is a right, there is a wrong, there is a path, and I've got a way for you to maneuver that path. I'm going to help you. I'm going to do it for you. So you don't have to worry about how good you are. I'll, I'll take that upon myself so that you can choose to love me and be, be with me. And I choose to love you and, and want you with me. I don't know. It's just, um, I just thought that was interesting. Chris and I were chatting about it last night because I thought, boy, you sure wouldn't want a God of injustice. <laughs> and I know a number of years ago, and I, I might have shared this in this group. I don't remember now because we've been going so long, or it could have been one of the healing groups. Hearing an explanation. No, no, I didn't hear it. It was one that I understood. God finally showed me. When I, there's the story of them returning by ox cart. They're, they're taking the ark somewhere by ox cart. And it's returning to its home where it belongs. And everybody knew the rule. You're not to touch the Ark, the Ark of the Covenant, or else you die. And it was on this cart. And something happened to the ox and the wheel fell off or something like that. And it caused the Ark to start to slide and fall. And two of the men, two of the people guarding it, grabbed hold of the Ark to keep it from falling. And they died, which is exactly what they'd been told would happen. But I know for me, I had a hard time with that because I thought, well, gee, their intentions were good. They weren't trying to do anything wrong. Um, they were trying to protect the cart. And I always thought, boy, that's scary. That's that That bothered me for a long time until I came to a greater understanding that 
we could trust God for what he says. Even if it's hard, we could trust him. Because again, if, if what he said could be changed according to our motives and different things, then, um, then he could be manipulated. And this way he could, he's not manipulated even when it's difficult, but that's like being mad at God because there's gravity. You know, if somebody falls off a ladder, we can't be angry because they fell. There's gravity. And, um, and in that case, there is just so much power there behind the ark that when they touched it, it killed them. It wasn't that God wanted them to die. But um, I just, it, it actually, in the end, comforted me to know that I knew God would, I could trust him for what he said one way or another. At least I knew I could, he, he is who he is and he'll stand by what he said. And that. You know, it, he, he may be a God of judgment, but he's also a God of mercy. And he will, and, and that, knowing that, made it possible for me to further trust what he said he'd do for us through Jesus Christ, that he meant it, and I could count on it. So that's it. That's just some thoughts. I'm, I'm curious how this teaching's going to go the rest of this week, because I don't remember it from the past. So it'll be um, interesting to see how it unfolds. And, and I'm going to start praying right away to God, Shofet the judge this week and see how, um, how that affects my prayer time. I think it's going to give me some assurance again in terms of trusting who he is. All right, and we'll see you Tuesday. <laughs> Have a good day.